Hello, uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to the best things to do uh, forward slash places to visit I suppose in the Pembrokeshire coast. Uh, so the Pembrokeshire coast is a national park that's in the southwest corner of Wales uh, and it's just so full of epic coastlines, gorgeous villages and just so many things to do in such a small amount of space. So I visited the Pembrokeshire coast as part of a big eight day road trip I did across the entire coastline of Wales, which I'll be posting a few more videos about soon. So make sure you subscribe and uh, make sure you stay tuned for that. But anyway, enough rambling and uh, let's go on with the list. So uh, number one on my list is gonna have to be Tenby. So Tenby is a harbour town and definitely the most well-known and famous part of the Pembrokeshire coast. It's full of just great scenery, great beaches, great culture, uh, and just so many things to do in a small town. In fact, Tenby is so packed with things to do that I made an entire video just about the top 10 things to do with Tenby, which I will link up here. Um, I'll also leave it down in the description, so if you're interested, make sure you check that out. So I will quickly move away from Tenby, but not too far away from Tenby because my second thing to do will be a walk around some of the best coastlines of the Pembrokeshire coast, in my opinion, which is a walk from a town of Saundersfoot, finishing at Tenby. In this video here, you can see a map of a little bit of the route and you can just see some of the stuff you go through in these videos. So you go through tunnels, you go through some awesome beaches, you go through a load of pretty little towns, uh, just kind of the best things to see of the Pembrokeshire coast in one five mile walk, which makes it ideal. Uh, so that would be my number two. So moving on now, we all know Wales is packed full of castles. Every corner you turn, you're gonna see a castle. So I've got to include a few on this list. I think I have three on this list. So this is number one, um, is Larne Castle. So the town of Larne is about a 10 minute drive from Tenby, give or take. So it's a 11th century Norman stronghold and it's actually classed as one of the most substantial castle remains uh, in Wales. So it's a great place to see for, I think just five pound each, somewhere around there, um, it's to just learn about the history of this place and just see uh, how big this thing is. So I would definitely uh, recommend Larne Castle. Um, and the great thing is, it's not actually the only thing to do in the town of Larne. Just a five minute walk away from Larne Castle is the house of the famous Welsh poet, Dylan Thomas. So if you don't know who Dylan Thomas is, he's acknowledged as one of the most substantial Welsh poets of the 20th century. So on the five minute walk, uh, towards his house you come across uh, some carvings of his most famous poems that you can see here as well as uh, his writing shed as well as just great views of the uh, the coastline and all of this stuff is free if you want to go inside his house I think it's about five pound uh, we're noticing a trend here I, I swear everything in Wales is about five pound each so those two essentially sum up uh, the town of Larn which is somewhere that I would definitely recommend on a Pembrokeshire coast trip so next up uh, has to be another castle. Uh, it's gonna be castle number two out of three on this list. Um, if you can't tell, I love castles. <laughs> so this one is another 11th century Norman castle. I think like 99% of Welsh castles, uh, they are 11th century Norman castles. But this one, uh, firstly, is free, which is a bonus. And secondly, it's actually been partially restored. I think it's now used sometimes as a wedding venue. And there's also a cafe in there um, and the entire courtyard of the castle has been kitted out in this uh, with these great garden designs and, and ornaments and it's a really uh, well looked after castle you can tell so I would definitely recommend this castle for a nice relaxing day you know there's something for everyone there you know if you just want to have a drink in a cafe you got that if you want to climb on the walls and explore and learn about the history of the castle there's a, a lot of stuff to see um, in a free castle which is great I mean, that looks like a five-star toilet. <laughs> Next, we are going up to the north side of the Pembrokeshire coast. All of the stuff I've talked about so far is within probably a 20 minute drive of Tenby. So now that we're going up, I think it's about an hour's drive away Tenby, and we're gonna be going to the smallest city in the United Kingdom, which is uh, St. David's. So as I said, St. David's is the smallest city in the UK, and you can definitely see why. Um, it's literally, an extremely short high street and at the head of that high street is the St. David's Cathedral that you can see here. So what I want to focus on in this video is the cathedral itself as it was definitely my highlight of St. David's. It was one of the most gorgeous looking cathedrals I think I have ever seen and not because of the size of it, it was by far you know not the biggest cathedral I've ever seen but the detail and the architecture, uh, it just kind of put it above everything else. It was so good to see, so many things to just look at, it was kind of like detail overload in a way but it just looks absolutely incredible in my opinion. 
Um, and obviously it's completely free to go in the cathedral. Um, what you might see from these videos in the background, you might see a little ruin. That is what's known as the Bishop's Palace. Now this one you can also go in, but this one is not free. It is the standard Wales price of £5 each. You can see the courtyard of it here. Again, it was another thing that was closed when I went. Um, I managed to get all this footage from just looking over the walls, but I would definitely recommend go in if you can because it seems so big. There was just so much to see. I could only see the courtyard and I'm just gutted. So, that's the next one on my list. Let's move on. All right, so moving on slightly down from St. David's, uh, about a 20 minute drive south is a place called New Gale Beach. So for the more physical and adventurous people, I would definitely recommend surfing here. It had loads of uh, great beginner's waves that honestly I've never really seen in Wales before. I've only ever seen in Cornwall. And there's also cafes and stuff for, you know, other people in your group if they don't want to go surfing. You know, we all know the pain when half people want to do something and half people don't. So uh, it's a great place. Um, there's also surf hire shops, so don't worry if you haven't got your stuff. The best surf hire shop that I would suggest is a place where I got my surfboards, which is a place called New Surf. Um, they do surfboards and wetsuits, anything you could want um, for an impromptu surfing trip. They also have the big softboards, uh, which are really suitable for beginners there, so you don't have to worry about anything really easy, you can catch any wave. And it was just a really great experience, uh, to be honest. I think um, part of travels, you know, is visiting and seeing stuff, but that's only so much. I think sometimes it's the activities and, you know, the experiences and the things that you do that really stick with you. For me, for example, uh, the surfing in Nougat for a day is the part of the Welsh road trip that has stuck with me the most and probably will stick with me the most. So uh, definitely don't shy out, give it a go, because, you know, what can go wrong? So as a small honorary mention, there's also um, some great coastline just south of New Gale. So I would suggest if you're driving back down south after it, drive along the coast for a while. You see all these great coves that I can, uh, you can see here on the videos. And just so many little surprises, you know, if you see something, it looks good. Just park up five minutes, have a walk, um, and you never know what you can find. So I'm getting towards the end of the list now, um, and now I'm going to go back down south and I'm going to talk about the place that we stayed for five days of our um, Welsh road trip, uh, which is a place called Pendine Sands. So at Pendine there is so much kind of quiet, chilled out accommodation here to suit everyone. You've got caravans, you've got chalets, I think you've also got campsites, as well as the beach of Pendine Sands, which has some of the coolest rock pools uh, that you can tell we had a lot of fun in, and uh, epic cliff faces, just to the beach with great scenery. So in the massive flat um, seven mile beach is home to some classic uh, land speed record attempts back from the 1920s. Uh, there's even a museum to commemorate this. But taking cars out of the equation, uh, the beach to walk around is just great. You've got seven miles of just a long stretch of flat beach, uh, which is really fun to walk about. And if you walk it down long enough, you can see this shipwreck. Uh, so this is an old 1920s shipwreck. There's not much of it remaining at all now, but you know, if you're just walking down a beach, you're not expecting to see it. It's, uh, it's a great thing to see that you didn't expect. I think it was an old sort of two-masted ship. No, there's no history on it. Who knows how it got there? So finally, the last thing, we've reached the end uh, on my list is a place called Clan Stefan Castle. It's another free castle, the third castle on my list. I had to get it out. So guess what? It's another 11th century Norman castle, um, you know, kind of partially restored, uh, completely free to go in. Uh, again, about a 10 minute drive from Tenby and there's a really scenic walk up to this castle as well. Uh, you can climb on it and you know have fun, go up the turrets. It's a great place to spend a couple of hours. You've got great views over the entire Pembrokeshire coast. Uh, we did it at the end of our time in Pembrokeshire before we went up north to go and look at Snowdonia and Anglesey. Um, so it was a really nice place to just finish off our few days in Tenby. And this castle is just a really another interesting visit. So uh, that ends my list. Um, sums up my best things to do in Pembrokeshire and I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know if there's anything that you think I missed off the list in the comments. So subscribe if you enjoyed and I will be making a few more videos about Wales very shortly um, and also at the time of filming this I'm about two days away from going to the Lake District uh, which I'm going to do some, some running, some climbing and you know all that good Lake District stuff. If you're interested in that I'm going to make a few more videos. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.